In other news, COE prices rose across all categories in the second bidding exercise of the year after falling two weeks ago. The premium for smaller cars almost reaching $58,000 after hitting a six-year high in late 2021. The premium for larger cars climbing the most today, up 5.5% from the second round of bidding to just over $82,000. The increases come as supply is set to shrink in the next few months. The Land Transport Authority says Singapore's vehicle population grew by 1.5% last year. Here are the top five best-selling cars of 2021. Toyota retained its top sales spot with close to 6,000 units registered, followed closely by BMW with about 5,200 units sold, and Hyundai replacing Honda in the fourth spot. Let's discuss all this with senior transport correspondent Christopher Tan. Christopher, Toyota, the best-selling car in 2021 yet again. Have Asian car brands always dominated the market here? If so, what does that say about the demand for Asian cars versus European cars? Well, Asian brands have certainly uh, dominated the market for a long time, but it's not always the case. If we go back to, say, 1960s or earlier, it was an American or European brands which dominated the market. But in, back then, when the markets all over the world started growing, uh, these brands started to shift their focus back to their home country or to other markets which were bigger than Singapore. As you know, Singapore, Singapore is a very small market and we are a right-hand drive market, which is actually the minority of world markets. So this shift back to elsewhere uh, left a kind of a void. And that was when the Japanese started to come onto the scene. And with their lean production, their efficient engines, uh, and you know, competitive pricing, they soon became a force to be reckoned with. Hmm. Well, sales of super high-end cars like Lamborghini, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and Ferrari surged by nearly 40% in 2021. Was it unexpected given the ongoing pandemic and rising COE premiums? It was not totally unexpected given that uh, you know, all over the world, the rich actually got richer during this period. You know, stock markets were very kind to them. Financial markets were very kind. And a lot of people made money, cryptocurrency. So the rich actually got richer. And, and also the other avenues of spending were, were, were crimped by the pandemic. And so what was the outlet? Um, they could buy more houses, which they did. And also they could buy more luxurious cars. And then this is what we saw a 40% surge in high-end car sales. Um, also, the other thing is that in our COE market, uh, buyers of these cars, uh, COE is rather inconsequential because COE premium is a fraction of the car cost. So they are more likely or you know less uh, put off by rising COE prices and they can always outbid uh, the mass market buyers. Well, Christopher, two sets of COE results out so far this year. The first saw prices falling, while today's showed a rise from the previous set. What does this bode for the rest of the year? I think uh, this year, the supply is going to be still quite small comparatively. Uh, it's always a 10-year cycle, and now we are at the downside of the market, uh, where supply is kind of uh, smallish. But the good news is that I think uh, there will be a cohort of uh, cars coming back onto the market. These are the cars that renewed their COEs, uh, owners who renewed their COEs five years ago, and they had renewed it for five years instead of ten years. And people who re renewed their COEs for five years have no choice but to scrap their cars when the time is up. So these, these, these numbers will come back onto the market and will be recycled as new COEs. That will kind of uh, you know, mitigate the, the traditional shrinkage in the market. And, and hopefully that will see, that will, that will see a stabilization of uh, prices. Thank you so much, Christopher. Christopher Tan there, Senior Transport Correspondent.